Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Repair guys, thank you guys for watching and subscribing to the channel, today will be super helpful video guys to any of you having a GDI engine guys, 2.4 GDI engine, but it may be helpful on other engine, GDI engines as well. If you need to remove or replace valve lifters, stay with us, we will explain how to do that, one common mistake people make that can cost you quite a bit of headache and quite a bit of money as well, so we're going to share that as we go. Before we start, let me just tell you a little bit about us, every single car we get at the garage, we try to make at least two to 300 free repair videos why we do that simply because our mission at the shop is to save you guys as much money as we can all we need in return please subscribe to the channel like the video that way we can keep making these absolutely free videos for you if you need to buy any parts tools valve if there's anything for a good price and quick shipping check out the link in the description of the video below so it will take quite a bit of work it will take uh, a lot of work first we need to remove the camshafts okay uh, if you uh, want to see that stay with us we'll cover how to do that everything from start to finish so we can get to the valve lifters so this is the 2.4 gdi engine that's how it's going to be in your car it has been used in more than 10 hyundai and kia models guys that's one of one very very popular engine by the way so if you look at it now okay what do we need to do here uh, we need to grab the upper engine cover and just grab and pull out it attaches with four rubber bushings to these four posts right here and make sure that the bushings are not stuck here if they are you need to remove them and install them on the cover so later you can install the cover now in order to remove the valve cover okay whether you're removing the valve cover or replacing a valve cover gasket you need to do quite a bit of work so first you will need to disconnect the uh, uh, the car battery why because you will be disconnecting the fuel lines and you will be leaking fuel and if you have sparks okay you can catch on fire on these modern cars it really matters which battery terminal you disconnect reconnect first if you do it the wrong way you can cause damage to the engine computer so we have a special video that explains that and i will put the link in the description of the video below number two guys you gotta make sure that your engine is really cool let it sit overnight because if it's hot and you spill fuel you can catch on fire number three you need to disconnect the low pressure fuel line okay the video is on our channel how to disconnect fuel line on a hyundai check it out it's super simple and it will teach you how to do that if you don't know how to then what else you need to do you need to disconnect okay the wires okay for the pump here okay for the high pressure fuel pump uh, now on the back side you will have a wire for the okay this is for the variable timing solenoid for the exhaust camshaft okay and you're going to pull it this way right here this is the pcv valve okay just grab the hose if you have a clamp you need to remove the clamp and pull it out here you need to remove the safety clip okay on the ignition coils and then if it doesn't want to come out push in then press down and disconnect it you can see it just like that pretty simple be careful not to break those because okay try to disconnect them with your fingers because if you rem if you break that one okay that safety thing okay your ignition coils may get loose now we're going to disconnect the fuel line right here with a three quarter inch wrench you will always have fuel pressure always use eye protection and gloves guys so be careful because most likely you will leak fuel we may not leak any fuel because we removed the engine okay so uh, probably we leaked all the fuel out because we had a few things disconnected before 10 millimeter socket and we're going to remove okay that wiring harness from the valve cover now so let's go ahead and do that perfect it's loose one more there okay great now you can see it comes to the side like that now we need to remove the fuel pump high pressure fuel pump go a little bit on each side and then remove it all the way that fuel pump will be under pressure because right here the fuel tap it the fuel pump camshaft follower also known as tap it could be on a high point in the camshaft ours is not now uh, i would recommend to inspect your camshaft follower tap it and replace it if you need to we have a special video that explains okay uh, the 2.4 gdi engine noise because of a bad fuel pump so check it out engine noise 2.4 gdi now we'll remove the ignition coils and we just notice now one of them is missing you're supposed to have a okay a bolt right here somebody didn't install it we'll be rebuilding that engine and in the meantime we want to teach you how to do things so we can save you as much money as we can guys perfect now it is right here so 
let's see what else uh, what else we need to do okay we're going to go ahead and remove all the inner bolts of the valve cover here can go ahead remove these two now all the bolts need to come out why because these bolts will fall and if you drop one in your engine and you don't know about it you start your engine later guys okay and it's somewhere in the cylinder head you're going to damage your camshafts your engines and you will need the engine rebuild or a new engine guys so always have to be careful not to drop anything okay inside okay i got these two okay right there both of them they came out perfect now this is the valve cover now let's see if we have anything else holding always inspect okay we have one hose that is for the air filter uh, for the intake hose that goes you can see towards the air filter holes okay perfect we disconnect that one and now we should be able to grab that one uh, the fuel line may be a little bit in the way so we need to come in an angle and the valve cover comes out just like that so we can continue with the next step now what we will need to do we actually uh, need to remove the serpentine belt that will be uh, the next step we need to get the belt out and uh, we'll need to remove the ac compressor so in order to do that here we need to get a 14 millimeter wrench in our case and uh, go counterclockwise we will release the tensioner pressure and uh, that will make the belt long and we can simply go ahead and remove it just go ahead grab it and pull it like that next let's explain uh, what we need to do here okay that's the ac compressor we need to uh, remove it off the uh, engine block otherwise it will not work out uh, you don't need to disconnect the lines okay and uh, you may be able to do it without draining the freon but careful not to break a line because the freon will leak out it's illegal and another thing it can severely hurt you your eyes as well so be careful guys so now let's go ahead okay and do that so we have four bolts for the ac compressor two are on the bottom right here where it attaches to the bracket that is screwed to the oil pan so we're going to do that and then we have two more on top one here one on the other side and we need to disconnect the wire as well that that wire is for the ac switch and this one this wire is broken Okay, check it out we need to fix it uh, and that's why the AC didn't work on this car so we'll fix it but you need to disconnect the plug as well which is pretty pretty simple so 12 millimeter socket and we're going to go ahead okay and get this loose now uh, it will be easier if you do the top ones first guys because if you do the bottom ones what can happen okay when you do those bottom ones okay the top one will not be holding it so let's go ahead do the bolts on top now one is out now if you cannot do it because of the ac lines you might have to disconnect them or get a wrench one of the two so this one i think the battery is weak on the thing as well but uh, we can we can just do it with a wrench get this one loose uh, it's not going to work with a ratchet either a wrench or we need to remove that uh, low pressure line so we can simply pull it out so let's go ahead do that if we just pre loosen it we can simply unscrew the bolt after that okay let me grab it on this side here okay 
It was extremely tight. Okay, that's perfect. Now let's see uh, if it's going to come out. The boat can stay in the AC at that point. I don't think we'll even need to remove it. Perfect. It can go towards the back. That's great. Now let's do the ones on the bottom. So one board will stay in the AC compressor and the rest, okay, will come out. Now that AC compressor will be stuck. You have two guides, one on top, one on the bottom, and they can, they tend to corrode sometimes. So just wiggle with a little bit, be careful, okay, and you can see right here, that's one of the guy. The other one is actually installed on the AC compressor. Okay, and I'm talking, okay, let me see right here okay so we have two on top not on the bottom now next step we need to remove that bracket and for that specific bracket we have four millimeter bolts two three four bolts perfect after that for the open we will guys have Multiple bolts that we need to remove with a 10 millimeter socket. We need to go all the way around. Number one thing, okay, before we start, there is another two bolts, long bolts that are with a 12 point socket, 12 or 14 millimeter 12 point socket. You need to drain your engine oil. Ours is pre drained, but otherwise, you remove the oil pan, you put a, a bucket or something, drain the engine oil, make sure you don't have oil, okay, in the oil pan. So, you can see that silicone just here came loose we need to find a socket that fits here now so this is the socket 12 millimeter this is a 12 point socket so let's just simply those two could be really tight why because they hold the crankcase to the engine box the bottom lower part of the crank of the engine box to the upper part of the engine box so those two will be super tight now uh, let's go ahead start on the 10 millimeter and removing the bolts Okay for the oil pan. So I'll try my best to show you where exactly they are So one by one we start removing them you can see the oil filter housing okay, is right here it stays on the engine block Now that oil pan usually will be glued really bad, okay, the silicone will make it really tight so you need to get a screwdriver kind of like and pry it on the further sections. It's a metal one so if you bend it you can straighten it later. Uh, but this one hasn't been resealed correctly so the silicone is leaking everywhere. So we'll be redoing, rebuilding the whole engine. It's barely stuck, somebody didn't clean it when they re-glue it. What you need to do? Okay, when you're doing the oil pan guys, you need to clean the engine book really good, get a scraper, clean everything good, clean the oil pan, make sure it's not contaminated, use the rubbing alcohol to clean the contacting uh, points like the engine book and the oil pan and then you apply the silicone. We'll show you which silicone uh, we, we use in uh, just a second. So let me just grab it quick. So this is guys the silicone, okay right here, grey gasket maker, it's a high temperature, this is amazing one. So once you clean everything, you're going to apply it on the inside of the bolt. And what I usually do, I go one small bit around the bolt as well. The bead should be around 3 to 4 millimeters thick, okay, around thick and uh, then re-glue it together. So you can see oil pan came out. 
So now, when you have in the car, okay, let me explain something. You will need to support your engine, okay, with a tie bar so it doesn't drop because you need to disconnect, okay, you will need to disconnect your engine mount. Uh, now, on the uh, body, it will be pretty simple. Uh, right here, what you will need to do, okay, you will need to support the engine, make sure it doesn't drop. You have one nut that you need to remove, one nut here and uh, two nuts here and one bolt as well. So let's go ahead do that. If you don't support the engine everything will drop. You will break uh, Your car your engine you can break casings you can break hoses wiring harness So always has to be supported Okay, and you will be able to remove it You have three more bolts that attach to the body there and you can remove the whole thing now That's the engine mount bracket here that you will need to uh, proceed with that bracket Okay, and they Kia, they like to use 12, 14 and 10 millimeter. So everything now here is with uh, 14 millimeter, except one ball that somebody lost in the past. I just saw that and they use a different ball, which is actually a standard size. It's not metric. Okay, you can see it right there. So that's always a good thing to work on your vehicle, guys. Sometimes you don't know what people do, even though the so-called mechanics will mess things up. Now right here you can see you have one guide here for the timing cover that you can spray with penetrating oil if you want so it can soak. Uh, we done that and one right here because those will have quite a bit of rust built here. And if you don't spray them what can happen actually uh, that cover can be so stuck that you try to pry it out and you will crack it. We will we'll talk about that in a second because if you don't do it right okay what can happen uh, you can damage it and it's expensive. So just a thin spray on those two. Okay, so they can uh, actually get that special compound can work while we're doing everything else. Now we pre-loosen these three bolts earlier, remember for the water pump pulley. So uh, once they're pre-loosened, when you have the belt, it's easier to pre-loosen all that stuff because otherwise uh, in the vehicle you will not be able to use a little impact. So nothing will be holding your pulley, guys. So next. Uh, <laughs> Let's go ahead and do, okay, the tensioner pulley, right here. The tensioner pulley, uh, in order to remove the belt, you go counterclockwise. So this is a reverse threaded bolt, so we need to go clockwise to remove it. And in our case, it could be quite tight. So we're going to go ahead, actually, and get the wrench. And let's get it loose. Perfect. Now, yep, it goes easy. You can see reverse threaded bolt. Now, right here underneath we have another bolt and this is a normal threaded bolt. This is not reverse. This is normal threaded bolt. All we have to do, go ahead, pull that one out as well. Perfect. This one came out. Now you can see even on the engine book it says Hyundai and Kia right here. The same engine has been used on both guys. So, here 12 millimeter, uh, 14 millimeter, excuse me. And we need to remove the Edward pulley. Now, we will need to uh, get the crankshaft pulley out. Let me explain now. You will need to get special tools for that. Uh, but for any of you guys, okay, that don't want to use special tools, you can do it, but I do not recommend it. Uh, with the special tools, what you can do, remove the engine starter and install the tool on the flywheel, or you can install the tool, okay, through the casing on the transmission right here. You remove these two bolts. Practically you remove these two bolts you install a special tool that goes in the flywheel here So it can lock it in place and it's uh, not going anywhere. So now <coughs> let me show you We got our pre loosen already because we used an impact Okay, you can do it with an impact but getting it tight you cannot get the correct torque specs and you don't want to leave it loose even though uh, This this is a kit pulley. It's not as dangerous as having an engine that doesn't have a key pulley now what we can continue with, we can start removing all the bolts for the timing cover. So let's start with 12 millimeters first. Okay, I'll come in an angle like that so you can kind of like see. Okay, where we are now. So, those are the 12s. One more. I think this one we don't need to remove it. This one there i don't think we will need to now we can simply start okay by removing all 10 millimeter bolts okay perfect 
Now that cover will be usually stuck really bad as I said because you have silicone between the timing cover and the engine block and uh, if you try to pry it all at once you can crack it watch how thin it is listen now that's super thin super fragile we've broken them in the past so you have to be careful there is a prank point here one pr prank point there kind of like they go in an angle you can see uh, so you go a little bit here a little bit there and uh, usually it will be stuck in these guides but since we actually spread our stew okay you can see everything goes pretty easy otherwise it will be really really stuck just to, to warn you about that so you can see and that time cover came out so this is guys the timing cover now <laughs> when you're ready to put it together you need to clean everything super good you can get a scraper and just go clean everything make sure you don't have any silicone old silicone like that okay needs to come out okay it needs to be perfectly clean it's like brand new where you have a contact point from the timing cover to the engine block right here the engine block itself you need to clean everything really good you need to clean the cylinder head as well here and you can see all that silicone everywhere needs to come out you need to shine it really good i usually use rubbing alcohol uh, and uh clean everything really good so you can remove all that greasiness and engine oil clean the timing cover and uh, we use the gray gasket maker silicone you're going to apply about uh, a three millimeter bead and you need to apply it on the inside of the bolts okay inside of the bolts and sometimes around the boat i'll put one small bead as well and later i'll wipe it that way okay uh, you can prevent any kind of leaks but usually you can see uh, you, you have to go on the inside of the boats because the boats they don't have an oil contacting point as well so uh, later you need to reseal your uh, excuse me your oil pan as well after that so so now for the timing chain the next procedure removing the timing chain there are two things that people usually do guys number one uh, you can set the engine at TDC point top dead center how you just put the timing cover okay you install the crankshaft pulley and you bring it to TDC and you need to have actually uh, the camshafts with the dots pointing up and these two lines right here okay parallel to the plane of the cylinder head the other theory is you bring the engine all four pistons to the middle okay that means that all pistons will be to the middle they will have about that much uh, space okay before they hit the valve so that way you can avoid okay bending a valve if something terribly happens i recommend to bring the pistons in the middle that way we can reduce the risk and we will uh, explain what else you need to do actually to put it together so uh, <coughs> i recommend to remove all four spark plugs in our case in our case guys uh, uh, we can practically remove cylinder number three and four because on that engine one and four move together two and three move together but I recommend to remove all four of them okay and bring them to the point that okay I can see that piston is all the way up here now bring them to where all four of them are practi practically lining up now let's remove on cylinder number three as well to have one more just in case okay I can see now I got a screwdriver that I can see don't tap too much just see where the piston is and we're going to remove cylinder number three we'll put the crankshaft pull and turn the engine so all four pistons can be aligned practically that way we will not uh, worry about smashing valves bending valves okay which could be costly to repair after that so now this one spark plugs loose as well all we have to do just grab it pull it out perfect and check out the difference now between cylinder number four cylinder number three goes all the way in so what we'll do okay we're going to put the crankshaft pull it turn the engine now if you have all four spark plugs removed the engine will turn easily by hand okay what one second this one came up this one went down so go back a little bit okay oh that oh, oh one second now. okay it should have gone okay slow 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 let's align them okay like like that okay they're about even i would recommend to check all four cylinders out. so next step what we need to do we need to remove the timing chain tensioner this is the main timing chain every time you replace the timing chain or timing chain components or 
you remove, uh, you get to that point that you need to remove something cylinder head, CVVT gear or anything like that, I recommend to replace the whole timing chain kit including the oil pump timing chain, timing chain tensioner because if it fails you lose oil pressure and you can say bye bye to your engine. So 10 millimeter socket, we're going to remove the timing chain tensioner right now. Perfect, it comes out. Now, next step, we need to remove the timing chain guy, which is one 10 millimeter bolt. Okay, right here you can see, pretty simple. And then we have the timing chain guy on this side with one, two, three bolts with 10 millimeter. Perfect. Let's do the other one now. You can see we are advancing here. Guys. So now that's the chain that's left here. And if you pull that, okay, that crankshaft pulley, it will come out like that. And you can simply remove it okay as well you can grab the chain and pull it out this is the main chain now how do you remove the oil pump chain for any of you that don't need that repair you can ignore it but i recommend to do both never ever remove that pulley why because if you do that uh, oil pump is actually counterbalance shaft as well and what can happen okay it will not be aligned ev anymore and you will have turbo engine vibrations so i recommend guys okay to never ever get that pulley loose what you need to do in your case you need to remove the oil pump in order to remove okay the timing chain and how you do that uh, now we pre-loosen these bolts but some of them will be extremely heavy guys extremely tight so uh, with 12 millimeter, uh, 12 millimeter, 12 point socket, we're going to remove the bolts. You have seven bolts for the oil pump. Right here, you can see one. Then we have number two. Great, watch how long that bolt is. Three. number four five i believe we have seven bolts six and number seven now that oil pump be careful it will drop on the last bolt you need to hold it really good because it can really drop and smash your face practically now we made a mistake guys okay so let me explain what we were supposed to do first we were supposed to remove okay the timing chain tensioner the tensioner first right here. tensioner needs to come out first okay that's spring loaded tensioner so i'm going to leave it here the timing chain guy now that pump let's see if it's going to come out it will come out like that to watch out now, right here or one of the two either the bottom or the top okay comes like that i recommend to remove the timing chain guide for the oil pump as well so uh before removing the oil pump remove the tensioner tensioner guide and the other guide okay we were a little bit in a hurry and we didn't do that so it's fine but the correct way is to do it the other way so uh, you can see this is the oil pump timing chain and sprocket here as well for the crankshaft as you can see the whole kit came out oil pump is out as well so now for the camshafts guys next step we need to remove camshafts uh, we need to remove the mount for the hypertrophy oil pump 10 millimeter guys uh, 12 millimeter excuse me okay now you're rounding the bolt what you're doing here so let's just uh, uh, switch to a different socket maybe because this one will round the bolts 12 point sockets are no fun okay i would recommend to use okay the six point socket like that because you can easily round those things and don't work with the 12 point socket here. okay let's try this one pretty tight so we're going to get the ratchet get them by hand 
you can see how we rounded this bolt okay perfect great now let's go ahead do that and we can continue to the camshafts after that so that mount should come out the whole bracket perfect now the camshafts guys there is a sequence of removing them not just installing you need to start with the big uh with the big thing on the phone now we need to start them probably by hand especially the 12s i don't think they'll go with the machine okay we're going to pretty loosen those now let's go ahead and remove that one so at least we don't have to unscrew them by hand perfect now <coughs> we can pull that cap out perfect comes out now we need to come to this side and need to do these two caps we're explaining about both camshafts now practically identical procedure guys so uh, you need to put them exactly in the same order that you remove them and that's how you're going to install them so put them in the same order and also make sure you don't uh, 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 if you're removing a head or something don't remove the uh, the valve tappets okay the valve lifters because if you do you need to readjust them each one of those here specific links and it will take you hours okay to figure out okay where they go guys so make sure you number them as well so you can see the sequence in which we go now and we just have the last one now perfect now we're going to remove the caps exactly in the same order okay that they come on the car okay so we grab them and you put them down okay you can see how they go perfect we have two more and practically guys the camshafts can come out now let's check it out we can lift them up and they should come loose okay that's intake camshaft exhaust camshaft so that's how you guys remove them so now let's explain guys okay we remove the camshafts now each one of those valve lifters guys has a specific specific thickness each one of those is different so it can have a specific clearance it's not they're not hydraulic lifters hydraulic lifters are self-adjustable those are manual lifters so if you're replacing them you will need to set the gap okay you need to put the valve lifters you need to install the camshaft get a gauge too and check the specs according to your ear and engine guys and specification now i want to remove some of the valve lifters okay if you for some reason remove them always number them to make sure you install them exactly in the correct order that you remove them and if you look at this one it's hard for me okay it's hard for me to uh, show you okay one second i'm trying to focus on the number here let me see exactly where it is first okay three three okay one second three three six zero guys okay three 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 point three six zero that's the thickness of this one now if i remove the next one next to that one guys okay this one here i want to show you this one is for instance three point three four five so it's exactly okay way different guys you can see one is three three six zero one is three three point five but once you remove the camshaft you can get to the valve lifters now we have a special video that will explain how to uh, set the valve, li valve lifter gap okay and all that stuff but practically you need to install the camshaft you can do it with just two caps one here one there and you need to measure the distance okay when the valve is closed to make sure that uh, the camshaft it's not pushing on the valve because if it's pushing you have a leaking valve now uh, if the gap is too big that will develop a knock and ticking noise as well so there should be uh, certain specs will share that uh, in the video for the adjustment how to adjust the valve lifters on uh, GDI engine because otherwise it will be uh, impossible guys for that engine to run correctly so that's how you guys do it just pull them and you have to uh, recheck everything and you might need to buy different sizes from the dealership to actually uh, do that uh, it's time consuming believe me so hopefully the video will be helpful thank you for watching and see you guys next time